Warning. I'm not in favor of preventing Mother Nature from carrying out her duty of natural selection. But since warning signs are mandatory, let me inform you that strong acids are highly corrosive and produce toxic fumes. If you have no common sense, stop this video now. I don't usually wear gloves with common strong acids because I know I have no problem with standing those acids on my hands. This does not mean that I challenge you to do the same. This tutorial is only about how to make a desired chemical product. Safety procedures that fulfill your needs are left to your consideration. I decline all responsibility in case of injury or death. Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make some stainless chloride test solution. All you need is some hydrochloric acid and some solder. Now, if you don't have any hydrochloric acid, Check in the description of this video for my tutorial on how to make it yourself. You may also be tempted to purchase it at a hardware store. This is perfectly fine, but it probably won't be pure. This is not a problem. You can purify it easily. Once again, check in the description of this video for my tutorial on how to do this. So here is the solder that I'm using. It is important to make sure that it is lead free and also that it doesn't contain any silver. Now, uh, there is nothing about the ingredients mentioned in this. So I looked online for the same uh, reference number. Yeah. And what I found is that it is made of 95% of tin and 5% of antimony. Now, antimony is perfectly fine because it won't react with the hydrochloric acid. So we can filter it out once the hydrochloric acid has dissolved the tin. Uh, also, this one has some acid core and it is not a problem because I'm going to boil it away. Okay, so I will be left with only tin and antimony. All right, so I'm gonna try to see if I can melt this solder with my heat gun. And uh, here I'm using a clay pot. Uh, be careful because it may shatter, so you should wear some eye protections in case this happens. Um, all right, let me go away. and try to heat uniformly the plate if you heat constantly in the same spot then it will definitely shatter now as i'm heating the solder the acid core is boiling off so of course you shouldn't breathe the fumes. I'm assuming that you are smart enough not to do an inhalation with these fumes. Okay, my heat gun is not powerful enough, so I'm simply going to use my torch. All right, so let me try with my torch. Yeah, much faster. Now, there is some oxide that forms on the solder and we don't want it. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of that oxide. Oops, the pot just cracked. So to get rid of that oxide, just shake it. And you see here, I have some really shiny solder without the oxide. All the oxide is here. Okay? 
So now I'm gonna cut pieces out of this shiny part. All right, so I have here some clean pieces of tin. I mean, that's an alloy of 95% tin and 5% antimony. And I am going to measure about 15 grams of it. Uh, I will explain in a moment why I chose this value. Okay, so let's see. I don't know if we can see the numbers on the video. Right now I have 11 grams, so let me add more. 12, 13, 55, oops. Yeah, 15.1 grams. All right. And now what I'm gonna do is to cut all those pieces in small pieces. That's, that's to increase the surface of contact with the hydrochloric acid because the reaction will be extremely slow, so we want to improve it. Okay, so a hundred small pieces have a larger surface than a big ball, a single big ball. Okay, so okay, so I have my 15 grams of alloy tin antimony, and now I'm going to fill the beaker with 50 ml of hydrochloric acid. Now, you can use the standard concentration, which is 31.45% uh, concentration. Uh, mine is only 20 because uh, my hydrochloric acid wasn't pure, so I purified it with the, um, uh, by following the tutorial that, I, that uh, I give in the description of this video. And by doing so, I end up with pure hydrochloric acid, but it has only a concentration of 20%. But that's perfectly fine. So, my goal is to end up with a 2 molar solution. That means 2 moles per liter. And I'm going to explain in a, in a moment the calculations. Okay? I mean, I want at least two molar. All right. Now, the reaction is extremely slow. And to speed it up, you can heat the solution, but not too much. Don't make it boil, because otherwise, the sulfuric acid will become very volatile, and it will quickly lose its strength. And also, if it's too hot, the um, stainless chloride that you are making may decompose into something else. I'm not sure about that, I would have to check. But uh, definitely you don't want the solution to be too hot. So just heat it up just enough to see some bubbles. Okay? And you will have to wait for several hours. Alright, so it seems that I have a good reaction now. So I guess the temperature is good enough. I'm going to cover the beaker with this so that not too much of, I don't know if it will prevent the gas from escaping, probably not, but at least it will prevent some dirt to come into my beaker, okay? And I guess I'm gonna wait overnight. In the meantime, let us look at the reaction equation. 1 mole of tin reacts with 2 moles of hydrochloric acid to give 1 mole of stainless chloride and 1 mole of dihydrogen. Our goal is to make 50 ml of stainless chloride solution that has a concentration of at least 2 moles per liter. This corresponds to 0.1 mole of stainless chloride in 50 ml, thus we need 0.1 mole of tin. The molar mass of tin is 118.7 grams per mole. So we conclude that 0.1 mole of tin weighs 11.87 grams. However, our solder is composed of 95% tin and 5% antimony. 
So we need to divide the mass by 0.95 in order to obtain the mass of solder that we need, which gives 12.5 grams. To check that our two molar solution can be made, we have to make sure that our acid is sufficiently concentrated so that two chlorine atoms can be associated with each tin atom. This means that we need 0.2 mole of hydrochloric acid. The molar mass of hydrochloric acid molecules is 36.5 grams per mole. So the 0.2 mole that we need weighs 7.1 grams. Does our acid contain enough of these HCl molecules? The table of concentrations of hydrochloric acid gives the answer. The temperature here in Louisiana today is 36 degrees Celsius, so the mass density of our 20% acid is about 1.1 grams per mil. This means that 50 ml of the acid weighs 55 grams and 20% of this mass is HCl, which corresponds to 11 grams. This is more than the required 7.1 grams of HCl, so we conclude that we have more than enough acid to dissolve the 11.87 grams of tin that we need to realize the 2M solution. In the experiment, we use more solder than needed, 15.1 grams instead of 12.5 grams, so we will end up with a more concentrated solution. The reaction is now complete and it took much longer than I expected, three and a half days. It could have been shorter if I had used some uh, higher concentrated acid, mine is only 20%, but also in the end I, I increased the temperature of the hot plate and uh, let's see what the final temperature is so that you can use it. So. Um, I don't know if we can see. It's probably hard to see on the camera, but the temperature is about, it keeps increasing. Let's wait a few seconds more. Yeah, 90 degrees Celsius. So if I had used that temperature from the beginning, it would probably have been shorter. Okay, and also it could have been faster if I had used a magnetic stir. Well, I'll know it for next time. But anyway, the point is that it's not complete. It seems that there's a lot of residue, but it's very spongy. The residue should be only antimony. So let us filter out the antimony. And that's it. Our stenous chloride is ready. It is recommended to add a piece of tin into the container in order to extend the shelf life of the solution. Let us check that what we have is really stainless chloride. We should be able to form some pure tin crystals by electrolyzing the solution. So right now I'm applying 9 volts and you see those crystals growing at the cathode. This is pure tin.
All right, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and write a comment. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. And I would also appreciate if you can share my video on your social network. Thanks for watching.